Hello folks, um, this is my first live stream on YouTube and I don't really know what I'm doing to be honest with you but I'm hoping it all works out. I'm here to answer any questions you might have about learning to drive, about doing the test, anything like that and um, if you do have any questions about the test, whether you have a test coming up or you're learning to drive or anything like that, just let me know down below in the comment section and I will answer them. Um, I know that the, the driving test can be a nervous time. I remember my own test, it was back in 97. Um, I failed first time. Hello from Slovakia, um, X Esteen, X Z S V K, well as we say in Polish, Jing Dobre. August uh, Barzo mi miwa. So I hope you understand that. My wife is Polish, so I learned a bit of Polish. But thank you for your first message there from that person from Slovakia. Good to have you. So I remember my test in 97. I failed the first time. I was devastated. Um, but what can you do? You just have to get back on the horse and try again. And that's what I did. And I, and I got a second time then after a bit of a three or four month waiting list. Anyway, I'm going to get on to some of the questions that I noticed in the comment section um, recently. So, one question that comes up, uh, actually this, this doesn't come up too often, it came from, the question came from Imran Gulzer. Imran and Gulzer, and he asked the question, I can't find my, um, hello from Adelaide, South Australia. Yes, I would love to, I would love to go to Australia sometime, so thank you, Taipan, Taipan, good to see you. So um, Imran asked about the dipstick. He said he can't find a dipstick. Uh, thanks for the help with all your videos. Dylan, GLC, uh, test at the end of the month. My only question is what do you think of rolling into first gear when coming up to a red light? So Dylan, I'm going to answer that question in a minute. Um, um, it is a good, it is an option. Uh, I'll get to that in a sec. Um, Patty Schmimbelas from Poland. Jing Dobre. Barzo mi miwa. Uh, be watching your videos for a long time. Think of yes, any questions? Um, please ask. Good to see you. So some for Imran anyway. Sometimes the dipstick is actually on the other side of the oil cap. So when you when you open the oil cap, there may not be a separate dipstick. It might actually be attached to the other end of the cap. So sometimes on certain cars, that's what happens there. Um, Reda Andrzejczyk sounds Lithuanian. Hello from Port Leash. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I'm glad glad to help you. Um, I'm trying to post more regular videos now. Jibin Jose, uh, how much time? Let me just try that again. How much time does it usually take getting appointments for full license in Ireland? Well, that's a good question. Um, uh, before this pandemic, twelve weeks. Post pandemic, about sixteen weeks. But it does depend on the test center. I'm based in Wexford, so you could have it in twelve or thirteen weeks in Wexford. But if you ring up the RSA and request the cancellation, you have every chance of of getting a quicker one. I hear speaking of Wexford, here's one from Wexford, Resmi Adarsh, apologies, uh, let me try that again, apologies for the pronunciation, hello from Wexford, preparing for the test, watching all your videos, excellent, thank you, you're very welcome, thanks for tuning in, in Wexford, I can speak with some authority on that, the testers are very, very good, they're very sound, they usually make you feel at home, make you feel at ease, the test centre is up a nice cul-de-sac as well, there's one in Gorey as well, by the way, I'm referring to Wexford Town now, so, Although Wexford is tricky because there's a lot of tight streets, a lot of Viking streets, you know, you could do you could you could do your test in worse places. Alice Carroll. Hello Dan, hope you're having a nice day. I certainly am. If this live stream goes well, I'll be having a nicer day. I failed my test recently for pro yeah, so I see that a lot. Um progress on the straight. I have a reset in two days focusing on trusting my but you have to trust yourself because in the end of the day, who else are you gonna trust? I would recommend getting professional lessons, watching my videos. Um, always remember, if, if you're worried about mistakes, a lot of the mistakes, they're bigger in your head than they are in the tester's head. So the very best luck to you, Alice. Uh, if you have any questions on the test, let me know. Hello, Fran Rush. Good to see you. Grace Cox from Clare. I love Clare. I was in the Cliffs of Moor a few years ago. Beautiful place. Just got a date for my repeat test. Had my last test on Monday. And got a test date again. So the very best of luck to you, Grace. Um, believe in yourself. Take a one stretch of road at a time. And it's a big deal for you. But to the tester, you're just another candidate. So try to look at it in that context. Uh, one road at a time. I'm sure you'll have a great chance. Nicola, Nicole Doyle. 
had my test coming up in four days. I was wondering if you'd recommend someone who's nervous. Yes, I would have recommend recommendation for someone who's nervous. Always remember, the things that you worry about most in life, they don't usually happen. So the worst you're worried about doesn't usually happen. Another tip on the nerves, it's usually just prior to the test is when the nerves are worst. I know that myself and from talking to other learners. Normally when the test starts and you turn the keys and you're getting going, the nerves will usually evaporate. Remember, it's never as bad as you think. Jamie Ward, thanks for the videos, Dane. You're very welcome. Mila Falter wrote, as we say, I'll well, get. Would you recommend ringing the RSA for a test date when I get when on a cancellation list since August? Yes, if you want, Jamie, that's that's a good idea. Why not? You might as well. They will try and accommodate you if possible. I think they might be kind of saving the cancellations for healthcare workers and essential frontline workers and all that. But I know people who I'm giving lessons to regular folk not working in healthcare, they've got a cancellation from the RSA, so Go for it. If you want to get a test date, go for it. They'll, they're very good up there. They'll try and accommodate you if they can. Protox95. Well, then, it's done. I have my test no very best luck. Test in November for Protox95. Very best luck. Plenty of time to prepare. Plenty of time to get lessons and check out my videos. Any questions, let me know. Grace Cox, uh, love your videos. Is that the same Grace as a few moments ago? Looking forward to revisiting your videos over the next few weeks. Great. Thank you very much, Grace. Um, any questions, just let me know if you have any issues on junctions. Um, I'll, I'll do my best to answer those. Alice Carl, thanks. You're very welcome, Alice. Best wishes to you. Patty Schmitzlach, or whatever. However, you can have, pardon my pronunciation. I'm fluent in English, nearly fluent in Irish. As for the rest of the Slovak languages, not so much. Are you allowed to communicate with the... There's a good question, actually. Are you allowed to communicate with the examiner, for example, to let them know when you're to let them know why you're doing what you're doing. I would keep communication with the examiner to a minimum. Keep it to like directions. Um, they will tell you where they want to go, where they want you to go, whether it's left, right, straight. If you're not sure about anything though, uh, do ask them to repeat a direction. But generally, you, you shouldn't need to let them know why you're doing something. They'll know that themselves. You don't need to clarify that. But if you're confused on directions or you're confused on if they ask you a control, do ask them to repeat. But really, don't don't try and get the small talk with them. You're better off focusing and concentrating on your test. Um, next one, Jibin Jose. If I have licensed particulars from my country, can I get an appointment for full license sooner than usual? You'll have to ring the RSA about that. If you're coming from other countries, there are certain... Um, they will have certain ways that you might be able to skip the list like from from certain countries if you have a full license you may not have to do the full 12 lessons you may only have to do six and um, the best thing you can do there is to ring the rsa or the ndls national driver license service um they will be able to answer that question for you in a better way greetings from germany thank you sean uh, i did german in school uh love to go there love the videos you're very welcome um i also saw Ger german associate germans with extreme efficiency and good timekeeping so good to hear from you, Nick Gurr. Dylan GLC, I'm um in Cork. I think he's talking to Jamie and rang two weeks ago for a can there's a, there's a, from the horse's mouth now. I got one for the end of the month. You're on hold for a while. But yes, absolutely, Dylan. You can do that. Uh, it's always worth bringing them up. The worst they can say is no, or the worst they can say is they don't have anything. Kush Nashi, thanks, you're very welcome. Jamie Ward, Grace Cox again. Right turns observation, very important. Keep the head moving. Keep the head moving left and right. If you're turning right, who is this? Grace Cox. If you're turning right, you have to understand you're crossing two lanes. That means you have to keep the head moving twice as much as, as normal. If you search in my videos, you'll see uh, just search the entire observation. I'm updating my thumbnails now. So um, it's always good to creep out as well. So if you're on a right turn, um, it's good to kind of edge out with clutch control. Give yourself a better view. Be more careful on right turns than you would be on left turns. Be careful on all turns, but be extra careful on right turns. You're crossing two lanes. There's double the risk. There's double the work. So my advice, creep out if you can, if you need to. Keep the head moving and don't forget whatever you do. Don't forget the one last look. That's the last look as you just as you cross the white line, the, the stop line or the yield line. So you should keep the head moving prior as you're waiting. And then just as you're, as you're pulling away, just as the car is moving, get the one last look. To the left if you're turning right, and one last look right if you're going left. Let's see what else we have here then. Um, Grace was there. Matthew Nason. So when stopped at a red light, should you... There, that's good. I was actually going to answer that question. Another good question. Comes up a lot. 
Should you stay in first gear when stopped at a light uh, with the clutch all the way down with the handbrake up or go back into neutral and come off the clutch? You see, it's like there's there's no one way, one correct way. There's, there's a number of ways you can do it. So if you're stopped at a red light, I would recommend um, waiting in first gear because if you wait in first gear, you're ready to go, you're ready to pull off. And I think it's, you know, if, if the light does go green, then at least you're ready to go. Uh, so that means, yes, with the clutch in. So wait in first gear with the clutch in fully. Having said that, if you're f if the light has only just gone red and you can sense you're going to be there for about 30, 40, 50 seconds, um, in that case, I would recommend maybe waiting in neutral and then when the light when, when you get when the light gets closer to going uh, green, you can kind of stick her into first gear then. So if you're in first gear, you're better, you're more ready to take off if the light goes green. Uh, so wait, I would recommend waiting first gear with the clutch down. It's not coasting, you're just waiting first gear. Um, I would recommend using the handbrake as well. I, my previous videos, I, I would say halt, H-A-L-T, halt. The times to use the handbrake on the hill, alighting or disembarking, L for lights and T for time. So the handbrake up at lights is a good idea, gives the car more security. If there's anybody behind you, for example, avoid roll, you'll avoid rolling back. Um, in case of cyclists around, just gives the car a bit of bit of stability, bit of security. Having said that, if you're on a slight um, downhill, uh, you're only stopped for a split second. It's not that busy. You'd, there's no need then to, to use the handbrake. It just depends on the moment. But if in doubt, I would recommend in summary, uh, use the handbrake, wait in first gear so you're ready to go. Nicole Doyle, can you get penalised for not using the handbrake enough? Well, actually... Yes, you can. Hang on, I'm after losing that comment there. Here we go. Nicole Doyle, yeah. You can. Um, it's, there's, there's no special rule about the handbrake, but you should definitely use it um, if you're on it the, the, in the moments I said there, halt, H-A-L-T, hill, alighting, disembarking, same like parking, uh, at lights or in the case of time. If you don't use the handbrake, it's not that the tester's looking to fault you, but it's just safer to use it if you're stopped a long time because you don't, like, if somebody goes into the back of you, for example, hopefully that would never happen. But if they did, if you have not got the handbrake on, you're going to be shunted forward, which is which is not good. So it's better practice to have the handbrake on because the car is safer and more secure. Having said that, if you're at a junction and it's slightly downhill, slightly downhill and it's only yield, yield or even stop maybe, and you're clearly at a quiet junction, you're not going to be stopped very long. There is absolutely no need to use the handbrake in that case. It just depends on the junction. If in doubt, I'd say use the handbrake, especially, and I know I'm probably stating the obvious here, especially if you're on a hill, you don't want to roll back. It's no harm if you're going to roll forward and you want to go forward, but you don't want to roll back when you want to go forward. So that, that should be your guiding uh, principle there. Jib and Jose, thank you, you're very welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Rhino12345, what a great name. I'm over halfway through my driving lessons. Uh, should I apply for my driving test now? Well, Rhino, you can if you want, but the cold, hard reality is you're not going to get a test date until all 12 lessons are done. Uh, the RSA will take your money. They'll process your application to a certain extent, but you're not going to get a test date. So you can if you want. Just no big deal. I usually say to people, just wait till the 12 lessons are done. You're probably better off. Um, but it's up to you. Um, I'd focus on getting the 12 lessons done first and then maybe maybe applying. Um, Patty, again there, will the examiner be tougher on me if my exam is at 8 a.m. <laughs> on a Saturday because there's no traffic on the road? No, no, I, I can't speak for everybody, but I, I would have faith in the testers that they're, they're, they're all professional people. They're not going to be any way out to get you because you have a nice handy time there. I mean, 8 o'clock on a Saturday, look, you make your own look in life. It's a nice time, nice handy time. Just take it, go with it, um, just don't fall into any false sense of security. Keep focused, keep concentrating. Um, look, the truth is, people are different. Testers will have their own interpretation, but I would like to think that all testers are the same. They'll test you at the same, they'll, give, they'll apply the same standard to you, whether it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon or 8 o'clock on a Saturday. But whatever, if you're tested at that time, that's a good time. Just make the most of it and the very best of luck to you, Paddy. Uh, Jib and really important. Thank you very much. Glad to be, glad to be helping. Um, and maybe I'll share with you the real re one of the, my motivation why I make all this information free another time. Um, Sarah ninety three passed my test Wednesday. Brilliant, well done. Congratulations, first attempt. 
waiting time for NDLS is crazy. Yeah, I had to renew my license there, actually, and I was waiting a while to get an appointment. But Sarah, that's, you know, passing your driving test is one of life's great achievements, and well done to you. Uh, it's a great feeling, so congrats. Uh, Kishwar Nahid, I forgot everything last year. I practiced a lot for 2020. Yeah, well, you know, once you get back into it, hopefully a lot of that stuff will come back to you. I have a host of videos here to help you. Uh, you've got plenty of stuff you can find online, the, R the RSA rules of the rule book, stuff like that. So once you get back into it, it should all come back to you. Grace Cox, thank you. You're very welcome, Grace. Uh, what a great name. Uh, Jibin Jose again, could you please suggest me the, the best and cheapest... <laughs> I the best and cheapest drug. I wouldn't know who would be the cheapest. They all look. The, the, no offense to their instructors, they all they're all going to claim they're the best. They're all going to. Some of them have big egos and they love putting pictures themselves on with all their passes. Uh, everybody thinks they're the best. You know. Uh, I don't suffer from that. I know I'm not perfect, so I don't suffer from uh false illusions. I would recommend uh Philip Colum Philip Colum Kerwin. He's an ex guard. Uh, comes across as very knowledgeable. In Gear Driving School in Dublin, very good. I did a course with Paul there uh, a number of years ago. Great reputation. The cars look great. They have a great uh, great driving school. And uh, there was another Polish lad, Karol Wotzia. I think he's over in Kildare now, though, so he's not in Dublin. But definitely Philip Colum Kerwin, Google him, are in Gear Driving School. And they, I, I would recommend them. The truth is, though, I don't know a whole lot of driving schools in Dublin, but definitely them too. Uh, and they will point you in the right direction. Can you drive unaccompanied after passing your test? Yes. Uh, whoa, hang on. On a certificate of competency? No. While waiting to get your full license, or do you have to wait until you... So Jordan Quinlevin, um, look, at, uh, if a guard stops you after passing your test and, and you're still waiting on the license to come out, he's probably going to wave you on. He's not going to make a big deal of it. But the official answer is you, you should wait until your full license is in your hand, your lovely pink full license, and that's when you can drive unaccompanied. But like I said, if if you're stopped, I doubt that you're going to be prosecuted on that basis because, you know, you have passed your test. But officially, yeah, you may, you have to wait till your full license arrives. Uh, binge watching all your videos, that's good to hear. It'll help my watch time and they're really improving my confidence. That's good. Do you need to bring your EDT logbook for the test? No, you do not. Greetings from Dublin. Great city, Dublin. Loads to do up there. Have a test book in Tala. Yeah. Home of Robbie Keane. Yeah. Um, no, you do not have to bring your logbook with you. It's all done online. If you want to bring it with you, make feel, if it makes you feel better, bring it in with you. The only thing you need to bring in with you for your test is your learner's permit. Uh, the logbook is not necessary because as instructors, we upload all those online. So nobody's going to check it. Nobody's going to look for it. Um, <clears throat> Anya McGlin McGlinchey, would you ever do mock test videos? Yes, that is a great question and a great idea. It is something I am looking at doing. I know it, it would help people a lot. I'm thinking of, of uh, just trying to get, I just need to get the organised that. It's a bit tricky with COVID. I want to try and maybe go into a community centre and maybe get some learners or ex-learners. But yes, I do hope to do mock tests soon. I completely understand they will be very beneficial for learners. So yes, soon, hopefully in the next few weeks or months. Um, Mohammed Awad, oh, hang on, I want to lose that. Um, here we go for automatic car. Do I need to use a handbrake in neutral when stopping for traffic and long stopping, or does automatic car make the exam a bit easier? Yes, the automatic car certainly makes it a bit easier. You definitely have to use your handbrake on the hill start on the automatic car. Um, you don't necessarily have to. I mean, it's it, it's like a it's like a manual car. I would recommend using the handbrake. Um, in an automatic if you're on a hill still and if you're at traffic lights just for security but you wouldn't have to use it for example if you're on the turnabout i wouldn't bother with there unless it's like some massive hill because remember automatic cars are great they do they do make the test easier generally easier to manage the car but they're not immune from uh, rolling back i've given lessons on automatic cars and those bios do roll back from time to time so if you're on a steep hill i would still use it but you have a certain leeway there on that. You wouldn't necessarily have to use it as much as you would in a manual car. But definitely use it at traffic lights if you're stopped a long time. Definitely use it on the hill start. But overall, they should make the thing a bit easier, yeah. Um, so what, yes, there we got that. Uh, Jib and Jose, what, what all things do we need to concentrate for manual gear car on the test day? Um, for gears... You know, get up the gears when the engine gets louder. Get down to second gear in time for junctions and roundabouts. 
come off the clutch slower so the car doesn't jerk and jump. If it's a good straight road, give it some OJ, OJ's juice. Put the foot down. Don't be a Sunday driver. Remember, there's no tests on Sundays. Don't drive like it's Sunday. Don't be afraid to put the foot down and get the fourth gear if it's a good straight road. Um, you can come down the gears one by one if you want. It might be better to skip a gear. It, if you're going to skip a gear, just, just come off the clutch nice and slowly so the car doesn't jerk and jump. It's not really about whether you go down one by one or whether you skip the gears. It's all about slowing down gradually, um, keeping the gear changes smooth. Um, let me see there now. Um, Existing ZSVK, uh, keeping it in gear with the clutch in, keep you prepared for moving off, but where's the clutch assembly? Is that true? It, it could be true. I don't think so. I, I've spoken to mechanics who say that may have been true 20, 30 years ago on, on older cars, but... Like I've had various Opel courses, I've had two or three, many, I've had two Opel courses, I would, you know, I've been teaching that way for, since 2008, um, whenever I get my car, got my car checked or get my car checked, I nobody ever says anything to me about the clutch assembly or wearing or anything like that, I think more modern cars are not, not as susceptible to that kind of stuff. Um, I'm sure it does wear out a little bit, but I don't think it's anything to worry about, I don't think it should, because you think it might wear the car out, I don't think that's an excuse to to maybe try different things or, or to enter into bad habits so moving on there um hi watching your videos i know i know that blend is true there La lapper fiesta watching your videos from hong kong of all places well thank you very much and um, best wishes to you uh thanks dan i've watched your that's great i've probably got over a hundred i can't remember how many videos i've had but i'm trying to make some new ones now and update my thumbnails to make them more brighter more interactive uh, so thanks for the support there, Lap Lapper and Michael Penka. Alexander Owens, he then didn't expect a stream. Yeah, either did I, and I don't. I'm, I'm presuming it's working out okay. I'm, I'm presuming you can hear me okay, and it looks okay. Uh, it's the first proper stream I've done, so you weren't expecting it. Either was I, fella. Either was I. Love your videos. Like I said, good, good, because you know these videos can be like your second instructor, like Alexander Owens says. Uh, you will get great one-to-one -one tuition with your own instructor, but sometimes it's nice to hear a different voice and get another opinion as well. Remember, I, if I say something that's different to your instructor, Alexander, uh, it's not that one of us is right or one of us is wrong. There's more than one way to skin a cat, so there's more than one way to do things right, okay? Michael Penke, I've been testing three weeks. Best of luck to you, as you say in Irish, Gunyairi Lat. Do I have to signal right when doing a turnabout? Yes, it's better to signal right at the start. So, you know, at the very start when you're pulling out, uh, do signal right. Um, but don't bother signaling after that because nobody's going to see it. The car's going to be sideways. So, But do signal at the start of your turnabout, yes. And don't forget to look all around you. Good, full look all around you. And, of course, the blind spot before you go moving off or before you go on the turnabout, Michael. Neil Fitzpatrick, test on Tuesday. Any tips? I could, I've got 100 tips, but I wouldn't have time to tell them all now, Neve. I think I'm a good enough driver, I'm sure you are. Nerves get the better of me. My instructor said I need to work on my mirrors a bit better. Yeah, mirrors, um, you know, mirrors are overrated, to be honest with you. Um, I'm sure you, if your instructor says that, then you need to work on them. But I want you to know, Neil Fitzpatrick, it's far more important to look ahead, to plan ahead. Like, what's that person doing ahead of you? What's Is, is that a yellow box up there? Is there a pedestrian crossing up there? That's more important than getting too focused on checking your mirrors because your mirrors only you only see what's behind you, but the you know when you when you observe and plan ahead you're seeing what's ahead of you. So yes, remember the mirrors Neve are incredibly important if you're changing lanes, if you're overtaking, if you're, if you're basically changing position, you know like overtaking hazards or coming back in after hazards. They are important at certain times, very important. But they're not the be all and end all. It's far more important to be looking ahead and planning ahead. But whatever you do, make sure you get your mirrors anytime you're changing lanes, like going into filter lanes when there's a little, you know, like when you're turning right, you might get lanes to turn right. Make sure you get extra mirror checks there. So you might check your mirrors before you indicate, but make sure you check your mirrors again then just as you enter the filter lane or change lanes. Um, Kelvin Coxlong, thanks for the. Hang on, I'm not losing Kelvin. Or, Kelvin, thanks for the videos. Have tested them on. Best of luck to you, Kelvin. Any questions? Let me know. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Great videos. I appreciate it, Jordan Quinlan. Very welcome, Jordan. Thanks for uh, checking out the stream. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Mohammed Awad. Uh, thank you very much. You're very, very welcome, and the best of luck to you. Remember, you can email me as well. I can't guarantee to get 
back to every single email dayandtai at gmail.com but uh, I do try and respond to every comment in the comment section but you're very welcome Mohammed. David Egan can you make a video on progress and overtaking? Well, I actually have already done that. I Well, sorry, maybe not overtaking, but I have made videos on progress and overtaking separately. I got done for this on my test. I didn't overtake because there was cars coming. The tester told me there was enough distance. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much for your support, David. Yeah, you see, it's a tricky one. It's even a tricky one to answer because, it, you know, I, I'm not sure where you're talking about, but I, I can visualize it all right. You see, just because you see... So you're looking to overtake... Um, just because you see cars coming doesn't necessarily mean you have to stop and wait. You could still go and overtake, um, even though there's cars coming. You might have to do it at a slower pace. You might have to do it in a lower gear, maybe first, second gear. It all depends on the situation. But, you know, just because you see cars doesn't mean you have to wait all the time. I understand you're probably cautious on your test. You're probably a bit reluctant. But you have to be decisive as well. And if you do have the space to move out and go, you have to go. Try and look ahead and visualize. Would I fit, like when I when I'm looking ahead, sometimes I'm thinking like, would I fit two cars there? Would I fit three cars there? Just just in the gap that you see ahead, think to yourself, would I fit one car, two cars, three cars there? Would would, would three cars uh, stretch across the width that I have to go through? Ask yourself that question. That might help you. But that's a good idea for another video on judging uh, when to overtake. So thanks for that, David. You might have given me an idea for another video there. Uh, and best of luck next time. Any other questions, let me know. Um, Existence, uh, thanks for you. Very welcome. I have a 2009 Astro Wagon. Well, you won't go wrong with an Opel anyway. I've learned that anyway. So uh, they, they'll they stand the test of time. So good luck with good luck to you. Um, Grace Cox, the streams are a great idea. Would love to see you. Yes, so would I. As I, I, presume it's, I presume you can all hear me properly and you can. it looks reasonably competent so um it's like driving i hope to get better at this as i do more streams it is my first one um i'm hoping to make them on a saturday maybe every saturday every second saturday all going well because it might help people get it for tips and advice for tests on monday tuesday wednesday um neve brosnan and dane any tips for turning right please and progress overtaking yes good observation needed turning right make sure you keep right when turning right i have videos on that uh, if you're going into a filter lane to turn right, a filter lane is like another lane that is especially for turning right, make sure you get extra mirror checks. So you might get your mirrors like middle and right mirror and then indicate. Then make sure you just double check the mirrors again just before you maneuver into the filter lane. Um, of course, it depends on the road. I mean, you may have to creep out. You have to keep the head moving. Remember, right turns are more tricky. There's more, more involved. Keep the head moving when turning right because you're doing double the work. Progress overtaking. Don't be afraid to give it a bit of juice if you're overtaking somebody. You know, it, again, it depends on the moment. Um, I always try and tell learners when you're overtaking somebody, just focus more on what's ahead of you. Because once you've decided to move out, well, you know, you've already gone, you've already made the decision to move out. Don't don't worry too much about the stationary car then, of course. Now make sure you're not too close to it. Make sure you're at least a meter or a door then from the stationary car or the stationary uh, vehicle. But from that moment on, scan the road ahead of you. You know, just and if you see a car coming, try and judge is how fast is that car going? Is he putting the foot down? You know, and that might help you then to decide what to do. And don't forget as well, if there is a line of cars, keep an eye out because you might, you know, two or three cars up, you might have a little space that you can kind of slot into in case you need to in case you need to yield to oncoming cars. So it's all about planning ahead. Uh give it a little bit of juice to get the overtake and maneuver done. And be aware of other gaps that you can slot into. But it, it depends on the situation. If you if you want to be more specific, I'll try and answer that question later as well if you want. Jib and Jones, please upload some mock tests. Yeah, good idea. Uh for manual gear users. Be, yeah, I would too. I'd I'd that's something I would love to do uh, more of. I just need to find the time and find the people and get the uh, get myself organized for some mock tests. Um Michelle Dooley, first time too. Good stuff. Neve Brosnan, do you think test centers will stay open the next few weeks? I think so, yeah. Afraid we're going to lockdown and I won't get my test done. Well, they're still open for level. We're in level three now, so the test centers are still open for the moment anyway. And um, now, when we go to level four and five, that may change. They're, they're not going to be open when we go to le if we go to level five. But if we can all kind of uh, do our bit and stay on level three and eventually go back to level two, we'll be fine. But for now, they're still open. Um, who knows what the future will hold? Jib and Jose, is it enough to go through? Hang on, let's go back to. I just lost you now. One sec. Is it enough to go through? 
and have an idea about the questions in the application consisting 792 is it updated i what jibben are you i'm not sure what you're talking about there are you talking about the, the app if you're talking about an app i'm not sure about that i wouldn't be an expert on that i have made some videos what did you ask about uh, questions in the application not sure what you're talking about there i have some videos on theory as well uh the rules of the robot can be downloaded free uh so i check those out but the theory i wouldn't worry too much about the theory it is nice it is good to get off to a good start but it's not going to be the be all and end all um sponge of doom yes i had my what, what great names I, I really should be more imaginative with my name shouldn't i i had my first two hour lesson a few weeks back yeah not the biggest fans of two hour lessons instructor never gave me or mentioned a logbook though well that is strange if you got your if you're a first time driver and you got your license your learner permit sorry after 4th of april 2011 you need to have a logbook uh, I'm not sure why he didn't give it to you. Um, he should be writing it as well, writing the date, stamping it, giving you some advice. Um, that's what I do anyway. So I would definitely check back with your instructor. You should be getting a logbook. Uh, I'm not sure why he's not giving it to you uh, there. So definitely uh, check that out. Mark King, is there a theory test I should study before my test? It depends, Mark King. It depends. Are you talking about the theory test? I, I presume you're talking about the driving test. So there is a theory part of the driving test he will the tester he or she will only ask you five six maybe seven questions um i would advise you to prepare for that as best you can the rsa rules of the road book i have videos on theory um you can download some apps as well on it i'm not really sure on the apps now i'll have to look into that because i wouldn't be well up on on the apps to do with that but you do need to study your theory and road signs mark before your test um I wouldn't get too excited about it. It is only 5 or 10% of the overall thing, but it's nice to get off to a good start. If you can get off to a good start on your driving test by answering the theory and questions right and road signs right, it sets you up then for the for the rest of the test. Um, Ashling or box junction, yellow box, is there a green light? If there's a green light, but you're not first in the queue, should you wait at the lights, not go into center until the vehicle in front of you clears you? It's a great question, Ashling or... Generally speaking, you should only allow one car to be in the box junction. Now, every box junction is different. You're going to have some small ones. You're going to have bigger ones. On certain, like, very big, very large box junctions, you may be able to go, the second car may be able to go into the middle. But as a general rule, because I don't know exactly what junction you're talking about or what side, you should just let the first car, if you're the second car, let the first car go in and wait until that first car clears the junction. Because I'd always be afraid of... If the first car, for whatever reason, stays stuck in the middle of the box junction and you've already rolled up behind him and you're and you're actually on a pedestrian crossing or something like that, then you're going to be the one that's going to fail your test for staying, staying stranded on a pedestrian crossing. So generally speaking, only the first car should be allowed in, in the box because it may not be big enough for two cars and the second or third car, if there's two or three cars, they may end up blocking a pedestrian crossing. So I'd be very cautious on that. I would be encouraging you to talk to your own instructor about that if it's in a certain area of the country that you're getting lessons in. Um, what I'm giving you there is just a general answer. Um, Dylan O'Sullivan, when in slow traffic, is it okay to leave the clutch in, stop the car from jumping? Absolutely, yeah. You see, some people are afraid of, of coasting. Coasting is actually a good thing. Coasting is gives the car more control if it's done in the form of clutch control. Now, I hope I'm stating the obvious here. I don't recommend coasting down a hill at 50 kilometers. That's That would be completely reckless and dangerous. But if you're just in slow-moving traffic and you're creeping along in first gear because it's slow-moving traffic, it's absolutely fine to have the clutch in. That's not coasting. That's called clutch control. So yes is the answer there. As long as you're, as long as you're just creeping and edging forward in first gear, Dylan, there's no harm there having the clutch in like that. And you can keep it in while you're waiting in traffic and then kind of move off again. Um, you can leave it in first gear like or, or possibly if you're going to be stopped maybe over 10 or 12 seconds you could actually put the gear stick into neutral come off the clutch give your foot a rest and then go again when the, when the traffic starts moving jake farrell when i'm coming uh, let me see now i just lost jake farrell there okay when i'm coming up to lights i keep putting my clutch in all the way to go down the gears from third to second then to first is that coasting and if so what way should i do it if you're in third gear and you're coming up to the lights you should brake 
early brake gradually. As you're braking, go to second gear about 25 meters from the line, take your foot off the clutch then, and then stay in second gear, and just stop in second gear. You, if, if, you're, if you're putting the clutch in, and you're going three, two, one, and at no stage you're taking out the clutch, that's coasting. You need to understand first of all you should only need you should only be stopping in second gear there's no need to go all the way down to first gear that just, that's completely unnecessary it's too much work just go down as far as second gear so three to two off the clutch slowly then have a nice gentle stop and then you can stick into first gear then um i've made a video on that if you just just search on youtube for day and tie gear changes and you'll you'll see that Neve, thank you so much for your videos. You're very welcome. Great help to me, and your calmness is helpful too. That's great. I I've learned lessons that it's there's not much point in getting too excited in life because it's not going to achieve much. It's not going to make the situation better or even worse. Uh, it's usually best to stay calm. Uh, so I try to anyway most of the time. But thank you very much, Neve. That's that's nice of you to say. And best of luck to your to you with your driving, Kira Mellet. Are driving lessons cancelled at level four or five? I don't actually know, Kier. I think so. I think they're definitely level five anyway. Um, I'd say I can see a lot of instructors would not do it at level four. Uh, level three is fine. Um, I don't do as many lessons myself. I, I'm kind of winding down because I'm focused on YouTube and a few other bits and pieces. I'm still doing the odd few, very, very few. I'm not really doing many lessons. So, so uh, level four, probably. Level five, definitely. It'll be cancelled. Um, Neve Brosnan, thank you're very welcome. Thank you, love your videos. Glad to help, Neve. Best wishes to you, Catherine Woodhouse. Hi, love your videos. Just in relation to the reversal on the corner, is it okay to stop for a second on the corner to get a full look around and then continue? Absolutely, Catherine Woodhouse. Yes, as you're going around the corner, say you're about halfway around, just before halfway, maybe just after halfway. Absolutely fine. Just stop. Get a good full look around, get a 360 degree look around, get get your bearings on the air, have a look for any pedestrians. And don't forget to listen as well, like, you know, it's no harm leaving your window down a little bit. Listen for any car engines or any children playing, like, you know, especially with this fine weather. And uh, that, that should help you as well to plan ahead. But it's absolutely fine. Stop, get a look around and then continue on then. The slower you go on the reverse around the corner, the more time your brain has to process the angles and to process the corner. So take your time. Try not to look at the side mirror too much on the reverse on a corner. Try and look behind you um, more often than you'd look in your mirrors for better observation. Okay, um, Joy, Joy Dip Mitty. During tests, is it okay to turn right with the main traffic light green or should we wait for the right filter light to go green? That's a good question. It depends on the junction. Generally speaking, if you have a full green light, you are allowed to turn right. <clears throat> excuse me if you have a full green light of traffic light you are allowed yes to turn right but you have to be conscious of oncoming cars um coming down from the from straight ahead of you from 12 o'clock so yes you do you you can turn right on a full uh circular green light you don't necessarily have to wait until the arrow comes on but then if the arrow comes on well then that's good news the other cars will be prevented from coming against you and you'll be able to make the turn then so it depends on the junction. If you have an arrow just pointing like um, straight up, well, that means you can only go straight. You can't turn right if if, it's just, if the arrow is pointing up like that. But um, I would recommend in that case, if it's a full green light, you could roll into the middle, um, give way to oncoming cars, and then finish your turn. And remember, even if the light goes amber or red while you're in the middle, you cannot stay stranded in the middle. You still have to go. Check out my video uh, on how to turn right at traffic lights. Just just type into YouTube how to turn right at traffic lights, Dane Tai, and you'll, you'll see my explanation there. Peter Philip Pabla. Hi, Dane. Is it possible you do automatic driving test tips as well? Um, well, I can, I can, you know, I've, I've been known to give tips on automatic. I, I, I've, I've, I don't have an automatic car. I've given lessons in automatics before uh it's not that different it's easier enough it's it's i mean it's it's automatics are great I, that's the way the future of driving is to be honest with you with all these electric cars coming on stream i think the future is more automatics it's it's easier to drive an automatic you know you don't need the handbrake as much especially not on the turnabout um you still have to use the handbrake on the on the hill start and just in, just one tip on automatics just be very careful in an automatic car for the creep Automatic cars are notorious for creeping forward, so you you're gonna have to make sure you have your if you're in traffic. Um, that's why I recommend using still using your handbrake in automatic. Cause I I'm I'm always very very 
very very nervous of, of automatic drivers allowing the car to creep forward because automatics have that kind of power that they just like as soon as you let go of the brake they'll just go like so you're gonna have to make sure you press that brake firmly maybe use the handbrake and wait in wait in park um sometimes it, it depends on the moment so if you're, if you're in control and you're a good experienced driver you should be fine but um automatic cars usually do make things a little bit easier um scooby yo how many questions will he ask you in the driving test well it depends on the examiner the examiner will probably ask you five six seven you know questions i what they'll ask you and i'm sorry the same amount of road signs all examiners are different you know some might only ask two or three some might ask seven or eight it, it just depends i often find that they'll ask about the, the yellow box the clear way when to use your dipped headlights what does the amber light mean um you know about, all about zebra crossings and one tester in wexford asked about the reflectors there a few weeks ago it's kind of a new tester uh, so that prompted me to make a video on reflectors there. My most recent video, actually, I only uploaded there a few days ago, is on reflectors. So you have to make sure you're, that your reflectors are the red lights at the back. Um, they reflect light. They don't have a power source. And you have to make sure that they're clean, they're intact, they're symmetrical, and they're not damaged, not broken, anything like that. But, uh, yeah, he'll ask you about five or six questions anyway. Um, Ashling or thank you. You're very welcome, Ashling. Um, so Neve, or when the light goes green and you're stuck in no man's land well is there such thing as no man's land or no woman's land if the light goes if you're talking about traffic lights um, if the light goes green I don't know do you mean that maybe you mean if the light goes red and you're stuck in the middle of lights I think that's what you mean Neve. there like you have to understand that what if if the light goes green you roll into the middle of traffic lights you want to take a right turn now, even if the light subsequently goes red, you have to be waiting in first gear, even with your hand ready on the handbrake, and you have to go. You cannot stay stuck in the middle of traffic lights. I know it feels like you're breaking a red light, but you're not. Because what colour was the light when you initially rolled into the middle? It was green. So you're just finishing out the turn that you started on a green light. I think that's what you're referring to. Let me know again further down if you're if you're not. Kira Staunton, I find that when I'm driving... I'm either going too far to the left or too far to the white line. I can't seem to keep my... Yeah, have I? Yes, I have some advice for you, Kira Staunton. I have made a video on that. Which video was that now? Um, it might have been the one with the yellow thumbnail a few weeks ago there, two weeks ago. Um, I think it was about how to pass your driving test 2020, 2020, 2020, 2021 or something. And I, in that video, I... I, I, I explain something that i've been saying for years and years in the lessons as you're driving along occasionally just glance on your left side mirror just give it a, little, a quick little glance don't go staring in the mirror now like like you're like you're doing your makeup brand like that just give it like little little quick glances and you should notice that your door handle should be just overlapping uh the yellow line like on the left or even the curb whatever's on your left and if the door handle on your left side as you're looking in your mirror if the door handle is just overlapping the yellow line or the curb or say almost overlapping that's usually a good sign then that you're not too far out and you're not too near the white line so try that out um, and hopefully that will help you uh, but the honest answer is experience will make things a lot better for you there um, all good things in driving come with experience hi dan do you think eventually the reversing around the corner and test will change for parallel part well that's a good question i wish it did um, the driving test hasn't changed a whole lot in the last number of years. I mean, the learning to drive has, has been dramatic changes with the EDT and the 12 lessons and all that. that that's been quite a change. I would love to see uh, more things come in like it is in the UK where you do sat-navs and, and you do sat-nav where you have to follow go, go follow a direction on via the sat-nav and the tester examines your ability to follow sat-nav directions because that's like future-proofing our drivers um i think eventually the parallel parking might come in but i don't know you see the the, the things i hear from other instructors and, and from the rsa is 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 not much on that i mean there's they talk about other things it could come in it should come in whether it will i don't know but it would make a lot of sense to have parallel parking and bay parking and sat nav things and moving off from the right as well as moving off from the left uh yeah so uh time will tell um it's not going to happen this year or next year but 
hopefully in five or six years possibly. Any advice for rushing around the corner? Niall, yes, watch my videos. Take it slow. Don't oversteer, especially on the final straight. I know it's a lot of people, they're doing all the steers like this and they're going like that and they're ending up doing zigzags, making themselves dizzy, the whole shebang. Take your time. Uh, don't oversteer. Generally, you need to look in your, look out your back window the majority of the time. But actually, I don't think I've said this much on my channel. When I'm teaching people about the reverse around the corner, I actually instruct them to look in the side mirror for the majority of the time while they're starting out and while I'm with them and I can I can look around just until they get their bearings, just until they get, get a feel for it. And then once they've got a feel for the reverse around the corner then and they're, they're happy with the reverse from looking the side mirror, then I gradually get them to look behind them more. So now that's me teaching somebody in a controlled environment. But for you, um, Niall, take your time. Um, look at your side mirror to help you out. And try not to oversteer. All explained in my videos on reversing around the corner on this channel. Catherine Woodhouse, thanks very much. Well, as we say, I'll squill get Tom Mila Fodger Road, August Banachty. You're very welcome and blessings to you. Now, let's see, where are we? Neve Brosnan. Any tips for the different position at roundabouts? Tend to struggle with this. Um, my main tip there is try not to focus on the one thing too much. It's like if you're shopping in a in Tesco or Super Value and you go along the shelves, you're probably you're looking for something. Your your eyes are scanning like this, so your eyes are scanning there, 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 there. That's my advice on roundabouts. Don't focus on the one thing too much. Keep an eye on where you're going. Keep an eye on your mirrors, but not too much, because roundabouts are going to be curved, so you don't want to be looking behind you too much, apart from at strategic times before you indicate and before you change lanes. And if you want to, like, let me know, Neve, further down what, what you mean by position. Do you mean, like, third exit to the right or maybe going straight or something like that? Um, I would also advise you there to, to practice those with, your, with someone, with, like a sponsor or with an instructor, at very, very quiet times where there's less pressure on you. And you know gradually then do it maybe at busier times uh that might help as well um uh, but like everything else experience will make things better um joy dip thank you you're very welcome joy dip uh d he he whatever that is watch your videos pass my test thank you. you're very welcome he, he, uh, if i'm pronouncing that correct congratulations on passing your test and you're most welcome well done to you alexander owns day enduring test is it a good idea for the driver to commentate his actions it is if you want i don't see any problem with that at all i know that might slightly annoy some testers i know some the majority of testers would have absolutely no problem with that at all um there's no rule book on this there's no rule saying you can't do it so alexander owens if you want to communicate or commentate on your actions i think that's a great idea i sometimes get learners to do that as well because it's a way of relaxing yourself it's a way of focusing the mind uh, I think it's a great idea. Uh, the tester shouldn't have a problem with it. If he does, well then, good for him. You're better off trying it. If, if it makes you feel better, go for it. Kira Mellet, again, have you any advice on being faster at pulling out at roundabouts? Yes, I do. Give her a little bit more juice. Bring up the clutch a little bit quicker. And as the car is moving off, give it some extra juice. But you see, they're just technical things that I can tell you. I know it's a lot more difficult to do this at a roundabout when it's busy and you have cars coming and you're worried about pulling out and all that kind of stuff. So what I would advise you to do is something that I'd done with a learner about a year ago. She was a bit bit dodgy moving off. She, was, she wasn't particularly uh, quick at moving off. It was mostly nerves and it was just, she just needed more practice. So I brought her to a nice quiet car park and basically spent half an hour stopping and starting, stopping and starting. It was very, very repetitive. I got her to uh, move off on the flat I got her to move off on the flat like she would on a hill start. And that helped her, I think. So basically that means getting a stronger bite as you would on a hill start, getting a little extra juice, that's revs, as you would on a hill start. And I found that doing that on the flat helped her then move off quicker at roundabouts. But really it's all about practice. I know it's easier said than done, but it's all about practice. But I do understand, Kira Mellet, what you're saying. It is tricky at roundabouts. I remember when I was learning as well, um, you, know, you want to go, but just try focus on your own stuff. Don't worry about the cars behind you. Don't, try not to worry about them. If, if they're getting upset, that's that's their weakness. They're, they're the ones showing weakness. Focus on your own driving. Focus on your own feet. And try those practice tips I mentioned there. 
Mark DC, there's a good Waterford name. Advice for turning into junction from fourth gear to second gear. Is it important to use the accelerator before clutch when taking off? Okay, I don't think we've we've somehow managed to muddle two questions in one there, I think. So going into a junction from four to second gear is absolutely fine. Um I I think it's great. You're you're skipping a gear, you're you're lessening the workload. Just when you're going from four to second gear there, Mark, just make sure that you don't come off the clutch too quickly and that you don't go from four to second gear too far away. Because what's gonna happen then is if you when you bring up the clutch, the car could jump if you're too far away. So if you're 40 meters back, try go from four to second, about 20 meters from the junction, and come off the clutch slowly. Is it important to use accelerator uh before clutch takeoff? Yes, it is. I have a petrol car and it's definitely very important to do that in a petrol car maybe not so much in a diesel car but when you use the accelerator first it just gives you that little bit of power it gives you that little bit of um little bit of juice moving off and it just makes it a little bit smoother uh, moving off so yes definitely accelerator first uh, moving off for a bit more smoothness and a little bit of speed taking off joy dip um matey if i can find you there what are the checklist we should follow on the day of testing to make sure the car is fully compliant for driving test example <coughs> brake light isn't working etc yeah um there's a lot there's, there's a lot of things you need to be like you have to make sure you're taxed insured nct no warning lights on the dash uh tires are in good order uh brake lights should be working yeah now with, with the brake lights you i always advise people your three brake lights are working three um in reality, if the two brake lights are working, you'll be grand because as long as the two side brake lights are working, the, the, the one on the left side and the one on the right side, you, you should be fine. But I would always advise just to be just you should have, have all three working anyway, just just so there's no doubt. Um, I would advise you to just Google RSA checklist uh, for the driving test and they will have uh, on their website rsa.ie. They have a good list there of everything you need. Um, but the likes of what I said there, tax, insurance, entity, the car should be in good order, no warning lights, um, it should be clean and tidy as well, and your windows need to be working as well. The tester needs to be able to put down the window for ventilation, especially during this, these COVID-19 times. So, uh, yeah, like I said, RSA will give you more information there. Grace Cunheedy, hi Dane, do I always indicate when I'm overtaking parked cars? Good question. Even if there is a right turn coming up, yes, good point. And which may mislead people into thinking. So, great question, Grace Conheedy. Um, you don't always have to indicate when overtaking a parked car. I often say to people, are you crossing the centre white line, the middle of the road, basically? If you're definitely not crossing the middle of the road, then don't bother indicating. If there's a right turn coming up, I'd be a little bit more reluctant to indicate. But, you see, on my car, and, and on a lot of cars, I, I'm guessing as well nowadays, when you give the indicator a little, um, a little, little gentle uh, flick up, it'll it'll go on three times. So it'll go tick tock, tick tock, tick tock three times, and then it'll just automatically turn off. So even though there's a right turn coming up, if you give a quick indicator, it should be fine, and that should not be misleading. But if you give a long indicator, it could potentially be be misleading. But remember, a misleading signal on a right turn is not usually as serious as a misleading signal on a left turn because it's kind of on the other side of the road. Now, you still don't want to do it, don't get me wrong, you don't want to give a misleading signal for right, but usually it's not as serious as if it's on the left, because if you give a misleading signal that you're turning left, somebody on that same side could potentially pull out in front of you, even though they shouldn't, unless they're sure. So, just bear that in mind as well. Neve, yes, that's what I meant about the green light. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, um, when you're on the turn, when it goes right. So, you're very welcome, Neve. Any time, just any questions, just let either here, or I'll be finishing this soon, actually, but in the comment section on my youtube channel I'll, I'll, i aim to answer all comments sarah 93 again i've heard multiple people argue for or against the use of indicators or lack of use is it a fault if you don't use your indicators i understand it's good yes it is good practice but will it fail you on your test well you know just there's a lot there as i sometimes say to people who are not originally from ireland um if they don't indicate or after a bit bit dodgy to indicate and i'd say to him so you so i say so you must have got your irish passport then because you know one of the questions in your citizenship test test is do you indicate at junctions around us and if you answer no well here's your passport you know so it's kind of an irish thing you know um it is good practice to indicate 
you don't want to be you don't want to be misleading, especially not on a left turn when other cars are on the same side pulling out. Um, well, let me see what Sarah was saying again there. I guess indicators. You see, it's always good to let people know where you're going, whether you're going left, right, overtaking, moving off. It is good practice. You have to be more specific, though, Sarah. Like if if what specific situations, but you're definitely right on one thing. It is good practice to indicate so other people know your plans and you make yourself more visible to other road users by using your indicators properly. Um, G. Jack Gutis, what do you think of the test in Galway? I was only in Galway once in my life before. I was in the Gwaltoch and Connemara and I visited Galway for a while. I haven't a clue about Galway, um, although uh, I drove there, but I, I didn't. I wouldn't know much about the test there, so sorry, I can't really help you there, um, Jack, Jack Gutis. Big D, hello, Dane, hello, Big D. Um, Ven Venugu Palin A V. Hi. When I approach a roundabout, I need to go in. I need to go third exit, but it's before twelve o'clock. Uh, before so you mean the left of twelve o'clock? Do I have to keep in the left lane? Yes, you would normally keep in the left lane if the exit is at twelve o'clock or anywhere to the left of twelve o'clock. Look out for the signs beforehand. Like you'll often see the signs, they're kind of like the you know the circular signs, and they say like this exit, uh, that exit, and this exit. So if if this exit here is like twelve o'clock on a clock, that means then that uh, left lane. Uh, you see, it's hard for me to answer. I can give you a general answer, but I don't know the particular one you're talking about. But um, generally speaking, if it's if it's before or to the left of twelve, then you stay in the left lane. Um, probably a local driving instructor would be better to answer that because he or she would know the local area. Ollie Lynch, hello to you too, Ollie. Um, Trisha Apollot, thank you so much for your videos. You're very welcome. They helped me pass my driving test first time. That's brilliant. Congratulations to you on that. Great achievement. Uh, you are a blessing. Well, I suppose I've been called worse, I suppose. And also, I always recommend my friends and family to your YouTube. Well, thank you very much and for any recommendations. Um, the more people to see these videos, the better it is for me. Uh, Trisha, congratulations um, on passing and thank you very much for your support. You're very good. Caroline H. Hi, Dane. I was wondering if you had heard any timelines about the backlog and tests. I applied for them in July. have a friend who had one booked in March. Doesn't have a date yet. Um, no, I haven't heard much now. I just, from talking to my own learners, like, um, I'm, I'm, like one girl, has she got a test there on the 11th of November. And we did we did our twelfth lesson there back in early September. So what's what's early say say the tenth September September October November. That's eight weeks actually. So I think she might have rang up and asked. <clears throat> I think it's kind of hovering around the fourteen fifteen weeks mark week mark now. Um, it does vary from test center to test center. If you are in a rush, especially if you're a frontline worker or you're working in healthcare. Ring up the RSA, they'll try and facilitate you. Remember, it probably it helps them. If they can give you a cancellation, it helps them <coughs> because it keeps the keeps the testers busy as well. So but I haven't heard I haven't heard anything concrete and it does vary from test center to test center. Um someone asked William Kennedy, what's that green P mean? Green P? Not sure what you mean by that. Oh on the on the header here, that my web designer did that actually. P is for pass. Um, I remember when he when he did that. Like I do a lot of my own web design myself. But actually, because it was less hassle and less of a pain to get him to do it at one time, because YouTube have these certain um requirements to to have a proper header. Anyway, that came from my great web designer Kieran Kieran Daly from Wexford, great guy, and he put the green P in. I think it just means pass. It it, it might be a a kind of a plate that might be used in Australia or something like that. Uh, but very observant there, William. Fair play to you. Lynchy, what are the penalties for getting assigned questions wrong on the test? Just just one grade, one mark. So that's really it. Um, so there's grade one, grade two, and grade three. Grade one is small mark. Grade two is kind of medium mark. And grade three is serious. Um, if you get a question or a sign wrong, it's just going to be a grade one mark. If you get two, two grade ones. And if you get three or more, You'll only get a grade two mark. You're not going to build up loads of mistakes if you get all the questions wrong. You'll only you'll only ever lose a maximum of one mark, one medium mark, um, or one or two small marks for getting a question or sign wrong. So 
It's good to be prepared. It's good to get the questions right. But don't stress about it. Don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world if you get them all wrong. Patty Schmitzleck. I don't think I've learned so much from this live stream. Well, that's, that's good. I hope and I've learned a bit about live streaming as well. Um, I'll be finishing it soon probably. But uh, I'll, while the comments are still here, I'll try and stay on. But I'm glad to hear that, Patty. Um, thank you so much for all your help. My pleasure. Best of luck on as has a test coming up. Very good. And we all have a great community. Absolutely, yeah. If I can help anybody with any questions or anything like that, um, I'm happy to do that. And thank you for your support, Paddy. Very nice of you. Ollie Lynch, pass my test. Good man, Ollie. Fair play to you. My car's accelerator isn't the most sensitive, so it's hard to give it uh, 1,500 revs for moving off on the flat. I nearly gave 2,000 revs moving off on the flat. Um, it can be over revving, Ollie. It depends on the car, you see. I mean, so I know I've given lessons in some cars where 2,000 revs or two as it is on certain cars is, is actually not that bad. It just it just depends on the it depends on the engine. I advise people not to be looking at the revs, not to be overly focusing on it too much, because I sometimes think the more you focus on the revs, the more kinda you can get too almost too focused on it and it can affect your moving off quickly and properly. Um for the flat, fifteen hundred is about right. Two thousand might be a bit much, but you know, it does depend on the car. Two thousand might be okay. Anyway, you by the looks of you all, you passed your test, so fair play to you. It, must, it mustn't have been too bad. Let me know down below, did that affect you, Ollie, on the test, or did the test just say anything? Let me know down below if I'm, uh, if you can. Uh, 2012 Blonde, oh, there's a great name, Blonde, Irish for flower. Can you adjust your car for bay parking after stopping? Will I get marked down if I am not straight enough in the space? Thank you for all the tips. You're very welcome, Blonde. Um, well, first of all, there's no bay parking as such. But the tester may ask you to bay park at the end, I suppose, or you know, if the test centre has a bay in it. Um, there's nothing wrong with adjusting your car if, if you need to. Um, I mean, it's it's ideal to try and get it get it right the first go. I've made a video on reverse and forward bay parking. Um, but if you want to adjust it, you you may you may as well. Um, oh, someone gave me a donation there, by the way. I this is where my. I'm going to trying to see if I can find it. Someone gave me one forty nine, and I thank you very much, whoever that was. I I can't give you a shout out because I, I don't see it, and I'm kind of new to all this streaming stuff. But whoever gave that donation there of one forty nine, thank you very much. And anybody who's donated by PayPal, really appreciate the support. Thank you very much. Um, back to the questionnaire. Um, it's always better blonded if you do it first time, but if you ha if you need to uh adjust it to fix it, yes, absolutely do it. Uh, tester could still mark you on that under parking as well by the way I know from Wexford we have a bay parking in Wexford as well where candidates have to park at the end now usually the testers just ask them to go forward into the space they don't ask for any complicated reverse manoeuvres uh, but if the test centre is busy they may have to reverse in so yeah look and, sim and summarise it try to do it as best as you can first time but if you have to fix it afterwards absolutely do that too um Ruben oh Cliffs of Moher there donated thank you very much Cliffs of Moher I really appreciate that is my first I think it's called Super Chat donation uh so uh Cliffs of Moher thank you very very much for that I remember visiting the Cliffs of Moher a few years ago absolutely beautiful place uh so back to the comments there that's Blonnet Robin Curian when we are parking our car for a while should it be in neutral or in gear in gear Ruben Robin sorry pardon me Robin in gear if you're parking your car and you're then subsequently stepping outside your car for example to go into the shop go into the house go into the test center you must leave your car in gear because it acts as an extra handbrake let's say it's like if the handbrake fails having it in gear means the car won't roll forward or roll back so you must have it in gear whenever you step outside the car but if you're still in the car neutral is fine because you're in the car and you've easy access to the brake and all that kind of stuff so that's that. Hope that clears it up, Robin. Um, Alana France. Um, should you indicate off mini roundabouts? Well, that's actually a good question. Yes, if you can. Yes. You see, there's different types of mini roundabouts. There's kind of bigger mini roundabouts and there's sort of smaller mini roundabouts. So if you can indicate off the mini roundabouts, yes, you should do that. Um, even a quick one. But if it's going to interfere, this, this is very important. If it's going to interfere with your steering, don't bother. Don't. You don't have it's not it's not essential that you indicate off them because it's, it may well be more important that you get your steering sorted out first. Okay, so it does depend on the size of the roundabout. Of course, the smaller the mini roundabout, the less likely you need to indicate exiting it. But the 
first indicator would always be essential, as in the, if you're taking the second exit to the right, the right indicator would be the, the important one. Okay, folks, so I'm just on here now over an hour. I'll probably be, be uh, signing off soon. Um, let's just a few more. We still have plenty of viewers and lots of questions, so I want to try and get as many as I can in first. Um, Damien Dubrovsky, or Dubrovsky, sounds like a Polish name. Uh, got my test on Wednesday in Cork, well, as we say in Polish, Povazenia. Uh, any quick tips on the maneuvers? Yes, I have lots of quick tips. Learn the art of clutch control like a Dobra Munchizna. Clutch control is when you just kind of up and down gently with the clutch. Um, try avoid dry steering on the turnabout. Technically, you are allowed dry steer, which is steering when the car is stopped. I mean, technically, it's not. No one's gonna. You're not gonna fail for it. But it's bad. It's not. It's bad on the tires. Like it's, it's it delays the turnabout, and it wears down the tires in the in the one area. Observation is crucial too on both. So on the turnabout, make sure that whenever you stop on the turnabout, don't do this. Do do not do this here where you're just gonna slide up there, slide dog look over there. Not gonna cut. Make sure a good full proper looks around on the turnabout and on the reverse around the corner yes keep an eye on your side mirror your left side mirror that's going to help you with your um you know to, to line up the curb but don't look in the side mirror all the time you have to look over your shoulders over the two shoulders and the other mirrors as well to get good all-around observation okay so i hope that helps you there check out my videos i've, I've plenty of videos on reversing and turnabout um i am so confused now uh how many faults are you allowed in the, t in the test? You see, um, not too many is the, is the short answer. If you get one grade three mark, that means you're a goner, and it's good night, Irene, curtains will come down. If you get nine or more um, grade two marks, that's kind of medium-sized marks, then that's going to be a fail. If you get six or more marks in the one area, like, for example, under... Uh, observation or on, on the roundabout say if, if, if there's a cluster of marks you may fail on that most people end up failing because they get nine or more um, marks like spread out overall um, that's the most common way of failing people get nine so once you keep the mistakes to eight or less you've got a good chance um, how many faults are you allowed that's it and then Orla gainer let me just go back to all the gainer there um is there a list of grade one two and three hours due to sit mine on one well on monday well you, you haven't got long to go then orla and the very best of luck to you for monday um is there a list of grade one or grade two yeah there is a, there is to be honest i mean if you google um if you google driving test report sheet ireland <coughs> driving test report sheet ireland you'll you'll, you'll get a, a, a you'll be able to see the image there of the it's kind of the old um, sheets they use because nowadays they have tablets like, but but that will give you a good idea. Like if, for example, grade one is minor. So let's say observation, for example. So let's say you're, you're taking a left turn and you had reasonably good observation, but maybe you just kind of, the last look you gave was, excuse me, the last look was a little bit late or was a little bit mistimed. You might get a grade one there. Let's say the same thing happened again then. The tester might have let you away with the first time, but they'll give you a grade two the second time on observation. And let's say you're taking, for example, a right turn and you only look left and right once and then you just go. And then kind of another car is coming up kind of fast and the other car is forced to brake because you didn't look and didn't, you didn't see him coming. That could be a grade three. So grade one is minor, grade two is average, grade three is serious uh that is dangerous or potentially dangerous so yeah google that and uh you'll, you'll find a list of of the of the marks there and then we have cliffs thank you again cliffs more for your donation really appreciate that uh pascal mullins off my end plate since last week that's great watch your videos leading up to my test two years ago if someone playing it playing it good anyway abiding by the rules fair play to you and past first try thanks for all the big help really appreciate that comment pascal mullins thank you very much and well done uh you're you're well and truly on the road there by the looks of it uh cliffs of more i have a drive save app it monitors you how you drive and gives you that's that's great would be interesting in finding out more about that and well done on on that cliffs of more ollie lynch um i use the instructor's car Oh yes, Ollie. I was asking you about that, Ollie. Uh, you use the instructor's car, Ollie. 
the accelerator on the car I got is I'm 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 gonna guess it was a, a Toyota Yaris because I know I, I know from giving lessons on Toyota Yaris they're a bloody nightmare to have uh, to accelerate. I I I I think they're a right pain in the backside. That's my educated guess. Uh, anyway, but anyway, back to your comment. The accelerator on the car I got is a bit stiff to press when it does get pressed. It goes up to two thousand, but sometimes I can give it the right amount. Yeah, you see, it just takes practice. It just takes. I always advise people to have your heel on the ground. Make sure your heel is on the ground. And that you just kind of gently, very, very, very gently build up the acceleration. Because if you're just a little bit too abrupt with the accelerator, it can go really high very, very quick. But uh, I found in my experience that the Toyota Yaris was very hard to get the accelerator right on those fellas, yeah. I could get it checked, but accelerator pedal cable may need to do. Possibly, yeah, possibly. You just maybe check out with your mechanic. Um, it could be something um, it could be something like that, yeah. It could be a technical issue. Cliffs of more again. Why can't you do dry steering on the turn? But well, you can do it, Cliffs of Moore. You, you, you like. There's nothing wrong necessarily with doing it. It is permitted, let's say, but I don't recommend it because it's dry steering. Uh, two main reasons: it's dry steering, so it's steering while the car is stopped. So what that means, it, it causes the. Where's my? Here we go. It causes the. Not even sure if this helps me, but anyway, what am I? Here we go. It causes the uh, tires to wear down in the one place, and it causes uneven wear on your tires that's why i don't recommend it but as well as that it's not really necessary i, I don't really know what benefit you'll get out of it i don't think it speeds you up because the time you're wasting when you're dry steering you could already be you could already be using that time uh, by getting the turnabout done quicker basically so they're the two main reasons you can you can still do dry steering but i think it slows the whole, whole process down it drags it out unnecessarily long and it's definitely bad for the tires it causes uneven wear any suggestions? Uh, Su Sumitra, that that Hiji. Any suggestions for automatic car driving test? Yes. Um. Where do I start? I mean, you know, I think I said before you have to be very careful in an automatic car for the creep. Watch out for the creep. Um, when you're stopped at traffic lights, for example, or if you're stopped in the queue of traffic, make sure you have your foot brake pressed firmly or have the handbrake up. Um, just for a bit of security be very careful for the creep i always remember i i, I always say that because i remember someone said that to me it was actually a driving examiner and i think i, I, I the memory serves me he's now the chief driving examiner in all of ireland uh stephen murphy is his name i hope he doesn't mind me giving him a shout out he he told me that before when he was testing me for my instructor exams years and year year long time ago and he's now the chief driving tester and i remember he always said just be very very careful about the creep in an automatic car be very careful because it can be very deceiving because they do operate on that a lot of forward power on the automatic car yeah you don't need to use the handbrake as much but i still recommend it on the hill start probably not necessary on the turnabout uh, but just be careful for the creep and i and i from my own experience giving lessons in automatics just watch out some automatic cars are better at holding on the hill than others i've given lessons in um automatic cars and they still roll back maybe not by much light but they still roll back so i'd be very very careful about the hills and automatic cars um cliffs and more passes test we scope well done congratulations that's that's brilliant um great achievement any suggestions on the drive safe app i uh, haven't checked that drive safe app out but I'm, I'll, I'll look into it and i'll get back to you but uh, i'm not i'm not particularly familiar with that at the moment what mistakes can get you a grade three cliffs of more again well yeah, how long is a piece of string? Let's say observation. Let's say you pull out in front of somebody. Um, let's say you don't stop at a stop sign and, and you just kind of slowly roll through the stop sign. Go through a red light. That's a great tree. Um, if you stop suddenly and cause the car behind you to stop suddenly, that could be a great tree. If you don't read the road ahead and you, you, know, you end up going up onto a pedestrian crossing, while <clears throat> excuse me while a pedestrian has already started to cross that could be a grade three um what else i know you can get a grade three for mounting the curb now not hitting the curb let's differentiate that now if you just clip the curb or brush off the curb it's not going to get you any uh brownie points but it's not going to fail you so but if your wheels leave the ground and you go up on the curb let's say for a first on a corner or whatever like that then that's that's going to be probably a grade three um what else i said the traffic light thing there didn't i um yeah basically anything that's dangerous or potentially dangerous is going to get you a great tree um 
Sumitra is doing a test on the 19th. Very best of luck, Sumitra. Any questions, let me know. Um, but best wishes to you in your driving test. Dylan O'Sullivan, if my downshifting is not very smooth, will this affect me in the full test? Well, yes, it very well could. It does depend on the tester. It depends on the tester's interpretation of how your downshifting was or how jumpy it was. But my advice to you is try and keep the going down the gears as smooth as possible, Dylan, male flower, because you don't want the car to be jerking and jumping. Okay, so that means two things. Braking as you're going down the gears, especially if you're going downhill, braking as you're going down the gears is very, very important. And also, also coming off the clutch slowly so that you don't come off the clutch like quick like that because that could cause the car to jump. And also, don't go down to second gear when you're too far from the junction. Wait till you're about 20 meters, maybe even 15 meters, 15, 20 meters from the junction. Like for, when I say from the junction, from the point at which you make your first turn to turn left or to turn right, that point. Okay, so 15, 20 meters from that point, slowly off the clutch, you should be fine. Um, need to keep the car smooth though. You can't be going around driving on a trampoline because it's, it's not going to it's not going to look good. Um, Sumitra again, can I use both feet for automatic driving test um let me just get my head around that both feet you reminds me of that scene in breaking bad actually where walter white was teaching his son how to drive and he used both feet because he used a bit i think he had cerebral palsy or something like that um let me just see uh no no you, you i i don't see why you use both feet i i'm going to be honest with you um so much i've never been asked that question i've Ne it's never come up before that I can remember with anybody, but I don't think you want to be using both feet. I think that could be dangerous, and I think you just need to keep give your right, give your left foot, sorry, a rest, and just use your right foot for the for the brake and accelerator. Um, I would not. I I yeah, it's just that's a slightly bizarre question, but you know I welcome all questions here, folks. All questions are welcome. Um, I would uh I would definitely recommend just one foot. Yeah, sorry, that question threw me a bit there. I kind of got me saying, like what. Uh, I would recommend just the one foot for the automatic driving there, so much, um, just for your own safety, because uh, you know the technique with using your left foot for the brake is, you know, it's not. I I've had learners before who accidentally, you no, know, accidentally use their left foot to brake, and it's just, you know, it it it's very. They, they can be very quick, very sudden. It, it can stop very abruptly. Um, me personally, I'm used to my left foot going in deep because the left foot is a clutch pedal, a deep pedal, and the right foot is more used to being more gentle. So, sum it up, I would just recommend using one foot for your automatic. Cliff some more. I was with my cousin driving for her test, but she got two grade two, she got two grade three, sorry, and one of them was for moving off. Ah, how can you get a grade three? Well, how can you get a grade three on moving off? Well, you know, how, how did the British vote for Brexit? It's, it's a bit mad, but it does happen. So how can you get a grade three on moving off? Here's your answer. Not checking the blind spot, not having good observation. That's one area. Let's say you move off and you move out without checking the blind spot. Now you could, she, she, I mean, God love her. She could have got her three mirrors, no bother. But if she didn't check her blind spot or she didn't refresh her blind spot, refresh the blind spot, like if the first blind spot goes out of date, you can easily fail your test for that. So if you don't check your blind spot, if you cause other cars to brake suddenly because you've pulled out abruptly without indicating or without checking blind spots, that could cause you to fail. Now, if you want to be more specific with me and let me know what the tester said or where where was it under observation or was it under signals or well, I was hardly under signals, but if if it was under a certain category, uh, let me know and I, and I'll try and put more meat on the bones of that. Era two thirty. Your videos are a godsend. Thank you very much. Test on Monday morning, so a binge will be had. Well, sounds good. Sounds good to me. Uh, the very, very best luck to you with your test on Monday. Um, positive thinking. Remember, you're well able to do it. Um, achieving is believing. So, Ollie Lynch again. Ollie Miel Flower. Oh, I was right about the Rs. Ah, see? I'm not just a pretty face, folks. Not just a pretty face. I've, in all my time given lessons, the Toyota Yaris. Now, I, I'm not. I don't want to be dissing the Toyota. Like they are. I drove a Toyota in a previous job in a previous life. I drove a Toyota Avensis, and it was. I wouldn't say it was the most exciting car, but it was. It was probably one of the most reliable cars I've ever driven in my life. 
uh, very smooth. Uh, the Aventus was beautiful, smooth car. You know, a great, great overall car. But for a learner driver, the Toyota Yaris is a pain because when you accelerate, the accelerator just goes, it just goes up too high, and it's it's just. Oh, I got some more super chat. Thank you very much. Who is that? I'll probably see you in a minute. Someone donated five euro. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. And yeah, and I think in fairness now, the, the more modern Yaris's are a lot better. I think I think they're. I don't know if I've given a lesson in a, in a modern Yaris uh, this year, but uh, I'm sure the modern ones are much much better. But the uh, the older Toyota Yaris's were very tricky to get the hang of the accelerator. So thanks for clarifying that, Ollie. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, Seema, oh here we go. Su Sumitra, I think I was talking to Sumitra. Thank you very much for that donation. Really, and folks, anybody out there who's been. Throw me a few bob by PayPal. Really, really appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Um, okay, let's see. Got a few more comments in here now. Um, let me see if that's where I was now. Uh, there's Ali, Seema, Joseph. Seema, thank you for your great... You're very welcome, Seema. Um, thanks for checking them out. Um, best of luck to, your, to you with your driving. Pauline Kia. Hi, Dane. Can you still use your car if your NCT has expired? Yes, actually. I got an extension letter. But, well, yes, I, 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 you know something? I had a girl there doing her test literally two weeks ago, and her NCT was out of date. And, but she had the extension letter, so the testers completely accepted that. So that's to do with the whole uh, COVID thing and all that. Yeah. So w once it falls within the, within the restrictions, once it falls within the categories of acceptance... Yes, that extension letter should be absolutely fine. I literally had a girl a few weeks ago. She had no problem. She passed the test. No bother with that. So, but good question. Yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, good question. If you have any doubts about that, by the way, um, Pauline, if you have any doubts, um, just ring up the RSA or even send them send the RSA an email. I don't know. That, I'm not sure about the exact email. Info at rsa.ie, I think. But maybe just check, find out on the website what the official email is or give them a ring and they'll be able to... to clarify that for you but as far as i'm aware that extension letter will be fine thai adventure era passed my driving test first attempt last year well done congrats to you on passing there thai uh, adventure era well done and thanks for the comment noah thomas nyanjkwi i didn't have got a got a 1.208 opal corsa well noah meal flower music to my ears 1.208 course that was my first car uh i've always had all the courses i've my very first car back in back in the day actually back in 2002 i think it was was an opal course i have a tremendous soft spot for the courses very reliable great car to drive very smooth easy and un unlike the yars very nice revs no that is just comment of the day i started out in a 1.2 uh navy blue opal corsa and it served me so well. I I trade up upgraded it about one hundred thirty thousand kilometers. But listen, all cars are different. All cars are you know have their ups and downs. But trust me, trust me. From someone who knows, you won't go far wrong with a one point two zero eight Corsa. Uh, a very good start car, absolutely. A very good start car. Uh, and then the same person just about to start my driving lesson. Have you any advice for them? <laughs> I've I've. I could say so much to you. I would just say, well, what would I say to you? I would say good luck to you. I would say enjoy it. Uh, I would say keep at it. There'll be good days. There'll be bad days, but stick at it because you know the the prize at the end is a full European license. It's gonna be great for your confidence, great for your independence. Always remember, you're never as bad as your worst drive or your worst lesson, and you're never as good as your best drive or your best lesson. But you can always strive to be the best that you can. So good luck on your journey. Enjoy them. I have a video on tips for beginners, actually. Lots of videos there. So if you want to check that out, feel free. Uh, I am so confused now. Dane, I'm a funny... Well, I don't know. Am I funny? Am I not? You know, you, you know, you got to look at the bright side. But thanks for that. I'm so confused now. Appreciate the comment. Cliff some more. My cousin keeps forgetting her blind spot, and I keep reminding her. Well, you know, there's, there's a... There's, there's, there's a good there's a good soap in there somewhere i think i would be a big fan of acronyms you know like one two three any regular viewers will will know my one two three is like one um first gear two indicate to the right and three three mirrors and blind spot something like that number four is blind spot blind spot being a proper blind spot where the shoulder comes out like that 
if you use acronyms, I think they'll help you. Just Google uh, Day and Tide moving off for a driving test and you'll, you'll see some of my moving off videos. I have one great video, one, one of my best videos, I think, is on five tips for moving off. Uh, it's about a year ago, but it's as relevant a year ago as it, as it is now. Um, so the use of acronyms could help you there. Um, but as always, practice makes perfect. Um, Lydia Kyo, will I fail my test if my stand under my bonnet has to be removed? Let me just read that again. Will I fail my test if my stand under my bonnet has to be removed because it makes a rattling sound in the engine? I I don't think so, Lydia. I think you'll be okay. But you see, I, I don't really know because unusual questions like that, my interpretation might be completely different to an actual driving tester. If the noise is excessive, you, think you need to get it fixed. You need to get it sorted. I'd always advise people, if you have any worries or any little doubts or whatever about the you know, technical aspects of the driving test, you're always better off. Just bring it to a garage, bring it to a mechanic, get it sorted, or use another car, use your instructor's car. My hunch is it would probably be okay, Lydia, but don't, whatever you do, don't don't take that as gospel. I would just advise you to check it out, to get someone who knows more about it to, to uh, you know, check it out. And then Sumitra, there's the, the Super Chat Sumitra for their kind donation of five euro. Thank you very much, um, Sumitra, I see that there, uh, your star. Really appreciate the support. Okay, Sean Donahue, any tips on roll positioning when turning right? <clears throat> Got picked up on it three times in my test. Sean, do you want to be more specific with me and let me know what actually happened? Because a lot of people comment on things like that, and I don't, um, you know, it. it, it if you can give me a bit more information on positioning. So like, for example, you said there on, on positioning when turning right. So maybe you cut the corner, you know, like, like you, you cut the, the, when you're turning right, going from a major road into a minor road, you may have turned the wheel too much to the right and went over the white line. That's for other cars to come out of that same road on. Maybe you didn't keep enough to the right when turning right. Maybe you showed poor lane discipline on a right turn, you know, like when if there could be multiple lanes and, and you were kind of straddling a line in a lane. Um maybe you stopped too far before the stop line or too far over the stop line. Who knows? It could be any of those things. It's, it's hard to say, uh Sean, but as always, experience will hopefully lead to more improvements for you in those areas if you practice more. Cliffs of more again, I've seen lots of two two thousand and five, two early hours. But I just bought a Ford Focus. Yep. Ford Focus, good car. Um, look, at all cars are good. It's just, everybody has their own preference. Everybody has their own style. Um, I just find for learners, the hours can be tricky with the revs. Um, but you won't go you won't go far wrong with a Ford Focus. There are clips of more. I think that's a good, solid choice. Uh, Sumitra again, please make more video. Yeah, I, I would like to actually do that for automatic driving tests. I need to get my hands on an automatic car, maybe borrow one or something. But that's certainly a good good advice uh, and good tip. If you have any questions about automatic uh, cars, let me know. There's a great guy, a great instructor in Dublin called Ian Daly. Um, he's a very well-known instructor in Dublin for automatic cars. Ian Daly, um, Safety First Driving School. Um, what that fella doesn't know about automatics is not worth, uh, not worth writing down. So check out Ian Daly, uh, Safety First Driving School. He's based in Dublin and he's the expert on automatic driving tests, automatic uh, lessons in Dublin. Um, good evening, Dane. Um, okay, I'm going, uh, folks, I'm, I'm really enjoying this, uh, this live stream, I have to say. Um, I, I have, I, I will have to finish up though in, in a, in a few, in a few minutes. Um, but I'm, it's just hard to get away when I have all these great comments here and I see there's still plenty of people watching. So just, just going to, hopefully finish up soon because I'm, I'm dying of thirst here and I, and I don't want to leave the uh, computer blank so let's go through a few more comments here um let me see where I, where I am now um clip some more there I said I got to that uh Mulder X good evening Dane well actually it's kind of afternoon here but good evening if it's the evening where you are any news on driving test resuming estimate waiting times will be greatly appreciated um driving test resume driving tests have already been are already up and running um Mulder x at least where i am in ireland anyway um they've been up and running since i think july <coughs> um waiting times it's about 12 13 weeks it can be 16 weeks it can be less for people who are working in the health service um you can ring up and ask for a cancellation they'll try and facilitate you if they can 
Um, but tests are back and waiting times can vary between test centres. Um, Noah Thomas, my pleasure Noah, anytime, glad to answer your questions. Uh, Rushi P, can you recommend a good automatic starter car? Probably a Nissan Micra. Um, but you see, it, 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 it's really up to you. I'm just giving lessons to a girl or, well, it was an automatic car. What was it again? Um, it was Nissan Micra, actually. Yeah, it was Nissan Micra. I think the Nissan Micras are great starter cars for automatics. They're nice and small, nice and compact, um, easy to drive, great little car, reliable, and there should be a reasonably good uh, choice of them around. But really, go to the car dealerships, test drive some, some cars um, if you can. That would be the best best way to, to do that one. Um, let's see, where are we? Uh, Nigel XI or Nigel 11, whatever the number is, are driving tests still going? Yes, driving tests have been going ahead since July, to the best of my knowledge. <coughs> um, they, they, are, they might not be doing as many tests um, as they were before, but it's nearly up at, up at what it was before. Um, capacity is not quite 100% like it was before, but... Yeah, tests are going ahead anyway. They're slowly but surely getting through the backlog. Um, let's see then. A few more comments before I call it a day. Where are we now? I don't know. I'm losing my thing here. Um, so we had that comment. Uh, Rushi, uh, are you trying to go ahead? Rushi P, of course, cheaper the better, as I'm still taking my driving lessons. Would be a first time driver once I pass the test. Yeah, well, best of luck, uh, Rushi. Remember, driving is it's not a destination, it's like a journey. Even when you pass the test, doesn't mean you're the perfect driver, but it is a big step. Cliffs of Moore, one, first gear, two, indicate, left trip. Yes, perfect. That's exactly what I say. Cliffs of Moore, spot on. One, two, three, four. Because you've got one gear stick, or one, first gear means one, as in one is the same as first gear. Two, because you have two indicators, you've got a left and a right. And then three, because you have three mirrors and a blind spot and four then. What's the best way to drive over speed ramps? Full and split ramps, third or four. Yeah, you see, it depends on the ramp. Um, I normally say to people to go over the ramps in the second gear, particularly if they're, if they're a decent height, the ramps. Uh, second gear, about, about 15, 20 meters before the ramp, and then just slowly off the clutch. Um, but some of the smaller ramps, you could do them in third, all right, yeah. And the split ones, where you have, like, two like mini cushion ramps in the middle of the road they, they could be done in third or fourth you see it depends on the it depends on what you it depends on what you see ahead of you like it depends on how big the ramps are you, you know the i would probably recommend third anyway i'd say for the the split ramps where you have two separate ramps um kind of spread out in the lane it just depends but yeah you know you have to use your own good judgment there all ramps are different heights they're all in different locations at different heights so just just be careful on, on that one um let's see uh 12 13 weeks where are we um so just looking at a few more comments here then folks might look at one or two more before we call it a day um let's see let's see um what have we got here What's the best way to drive? We'll have that one. Pass my test. Uh, Keen Lee passed my test the week before I headed over to the UK for college. Great. Your videos helped me a lot. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Keen, and congratulations on passing. That's brilliant. Um, well done to you. Glad to help you. My Nigel X, my window regulator for the driver's side is broken, so sometimes the window goes down and when I try to pull it up. I, Nigel Mailflower, I'd be very careful on that one. I only got an email from someone there a few days ago who said that the tester failed them for because the window wasn't working. Uh, now, at least your one goes down, but as with any uh, technical issue with a, with a driving test, I would strongly recommend that if there's any issue like that or any warning light on the dashboard, get it sorted and don't have that doubt hanging over you as you go into your test. It's stressful enough without having that hanging over you. So be very careful with that one. If Windows need to be working well at these days because the tester will want to maybe put the window up a bit or down a bit for uh, to regulate ventilation because we're all advised in lessons and in the tests to have the air um have plenty of air in the car and ha to have the car well ventilated. So I would recommend that your windows should be working perfectly for your test. Um, Alexander Owens, we we'll look forward to more. Yes, hopefully next Saturday as well, Alexander. Thanks for tuning in, Nigel. 
book my test in July still waiting yes some people are and um, if you booked in July you probably shouldn't have too long to wait now it does depend on the test center um, but good luck to you whenever that is <coughs> Mulder X 12 13 weeks sounds about right Mulder yeah uh, Shuzzle Banzari I passed the test day before yesterday thanks to your videos I have always been confused about when to turn right on junctions with traffic lights but your video thank you very much and congratulations uh, Shuzzle delighted to be able to help you Cliff some more again um, you should have an automatic car for automatic driving lessons. Yes, it will help people to drive automatic car in the future. Uh, automatic cars will, they certainly will dominate as more hype. That's, that's for sure. Uh, good advice, Cliff. Some more. I don't know if I'll be getting an automatic car anytime soon. Um, see what way things go. Uh, but in the future, yeah, I, I agree with you. That's the way things are going, absolutely. Uh, Marco Lone failed my test the other day. Oh, geez, sorry to hear that. Grade 3 for turning left at a yield sign. Sign T junction when a car was passing left to right, not turning. I don't think I was going anything wrong in my mind. Let me just get my head around that again. You failed the test because you got a grade three for turning left at a yield sign. So a car was passing left to right. Pa car was passing left to right. Yeah, that's strange. I'm not sure why you'd fail for that, but Unless the other car was, unless it was a narrow road and the other car was a little bit close to you, or unless you pulled out a bit wide, maybe, maybe you didn't keep tight to the curb, didn't keep tight to the left, maybe. Um, not sure. Maybe, maybe the tester did. The tester give you any more information on that? Um, sounds a strange one, but look, it's it is what it is. There's not much you can do about it now. Only try your best to learn from it, and hopefully you learn from it and and be better next time. Rushi, thanks for answering my question and the motivation and the motivation then. And the motivation. Well, glad to help, Rushi, and best of luck to you. Anytime, any questions, I'm glad to answer. Ev Mac, great help to me. Leave me up to drive test. Pat, brilliant. Congratulations, Ev Mac. Great job. Only two grade twos. Very good. Cliss of Moore, Carrigan Shannon. Yeah, waiting time is is two to three weeks. Jeez, that's that's a that's a short wait time anyway. Oshin McGee, um. Oshin, when you're turning right at traffic lights and the round light is green, yes, circular ground light, can you turn before the filter light comes on if there's no oncoming traffic? Yes, you can, Oshin McGee, Oshin Mac. If you have a circle green light, that's what we call a full green light, and so the traffic lights crossroads and there's no oncoming cars from 12 o'clock, you can, yes, turn right. Yes, you can, as long as there's nobody coming towards you doing less work than you. But just be careful, watch out for... <clears throat> watch out for oncoming cars there um uh, but yeah you can do that i've made a video on that just just search day and tie how to turn right at traffic lights for a detailed explanation uh darth vader what a great name your videos helped me pass the test especially reverse. thank you very much especially reverse on corner great delighted to hear that darth vader and congratulations on passing your test cliff some more i actually hit a ramp uh really hard and felt like the car was going to fly off yeah that can be tricky you know but you know we we live and we learn um some ramps can be quite deceiving, you know. I'd always recommend kind of slowing down and doing them in second gear just to be cautious. But it does vary. It 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 you know all ramps are different, just like all junctions are different. Um. So I think I'm getting in the end. I'm nearly caught up on all the comments now. So I might finish here after um after the next few. I know I've said that before, but um Peter Quinn, any advice for stopping at junctions? My stops are quite abrupt. Uh, massage the brake, Peter. Male flower. When you're stopping at a junction, I've made a video on that. I'm sure in the future I'll find a way to link it up on the screen here or something like. But I've made a video on how to brake properly. If you just if you just type into YouTube Dane Tai, how to brake properly, I go through the process of massaging the brake, like pretending the brake is like eggshells or pretending the brake is like a baby's head or something like that. But you basically massaging the brake means you have your heel on the ground, your just be your right foot, your heel on the ground, and just come onto the brake and just kind of. Come off it. On, off. On, off. Kind of like pulses. Practice braking with pulses and they will help you. Because, you listen, you don't want to be braking too abruptly. It's not going to look good for you if you have these abrupt stops. It needs to be smoother. You need to do, you need to do, do it uh, better than that. Um, let's see. Where are we? Um, Darth Vader. Yeah, Cliff Moore. Peter Quinn. Nigel X. Uh, the independent Twitter... The independent Twitter came out a few days ago and said the average wait list to test about eight months. Yeah, it's just eight months is a bit long. I mean, it, it, like where I am in Wexford now, it's not that long, but 
I if they said it, it could be true. It does depend on the test centre. Kiss of more. I wouldn't have passed the test out your video, but thank you very much. <coughs> um, help me pass lessons don't actually your videos help me pass and lessons don't actually help that much but it's just a start well I'm glad to help you clip some more um, delighted you found them useful and thanks for the support uh, Mark Olone no I challenged him on it and he wasn't having it um, ok oh that's on the on the left turn yeah ok sometimes testers will put up a brick wall you see and they'll you know they, they, they won't give you a whole lot of information some will the ones in Wexford are pretty good for communicating it just depends on the on the on the tester, but that's uh, that's unfortunate there, Mark. Sorry to hear that. What do you think of uh, G Joe 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 Kusis? What do you think of not having uh, a car to practice with at home when finishing EDT training and then left with nothing to practice before a test? I have to wait months before a test. To be yeah, well you know, life is tricky sometimes. Life is hard. Uh you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, if you can't, if you don't have a car to practice it, I don't see what option you have only to get more lessons. Um, or if you can you save up money and buy a car? I mean, it's 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 tricky. It is challenging. I I, I don't doubt it. It's a challenge and it's difficult. But you know you got to do what you got to do. Um. Okay. So I'm going to just uh do a few more. Um. As I'm sure you've heard me saying before. But let's see. Watching an um, interesting life. Can I drive over hatch markings if you're turning right? You need to be careful on this one. Um, uh, what is the exact rule on hash markings? Good question, because I haven't seen an exact rule anyway. Um, I have seen people writing over almost every time. Thanks a million. Okay, so the rule with hatch markings is <clears throat> you should not cross the hatch markings. Uh, you should not unless it's some kind of an emergency. If the hatch markings are surrounded by a solid white line, they must not be crossed. But, you know, there's, what, there, there's a difference between what the rule is and what's practical. So if you're turning right and it's a busy junction or a busy road, you don't want to be stuck out in the middle of the road blocking the lane when you could be over the hatch markings and therefore allowing the other cars to go by. So a driving tester told me that in those exact words um, a couple of months ago when I was clarifying with him. So yeah, do your best to not go into the hatch markings because they're there to separate traffic. But if you have to go in because you don't want to cause a huge tailback of traffic, then you don't really have much choice only to go in. If the hatch markings are surrounded by broken white lines, that should be absolutely fine to go in then if you're turning right. Okay, but it is a bit of a grey area. I haven't seen any definition of the rules of the road book. Um, it is a grey area and you have to use your own good judgment there on that one. Um, Darth Vader, can you exit a two lane roundabout in the right lane when you're going straight and there are no arrows and your eventual plan on the roundabout is to turn right after? You see, that's a, that's a great question, Darth Vader. I, I don't know the particular roundabout you're talking about. I would like to think, yes, that it is okay to exit in the right lane as long as it means that your the right lane um, joins up with the, with the straight on the roundabout, if you know what I mean. So if you're exiting in the right lane on the roundabout, that there's a clear path and the lines kind of uh, guide you off to go straight on the roundabout. That could be okay. It depends on the roundabout though. Um, if you're going right up ahead, I'm not sure that's relevant. I mean, it depends on the round. If, if you're going right up ahead, that's completely separate to the roundabout. So uh, that's just my opinion. It, it, I'm not sure it's going to be connected to it or not, but um, it does depend on the roundabout. It's a tricky one to answer because all roundabouts are different. Uh, but you have to be careful there and watch out for the road markings. If you're in any doubt, I would encourage you to probably try and exit the left lane if you're in doubt. Okay, Oshin McGee. Um, is your accompanying driver on the day of the test allowed to wait at the test centre or do they have to wait outside? They have to wait outside because of the restrictions. Nobody's allowed inside the test centre apart from the testers and the driving test candidates. So they will have to wait outside. I have heard of Dunlira. Test route is easier than fingless. Don't know that now. Um, not sure about that. Any of those test centers in Dublin? Um, hang on, a, let me see. I've just lost that comment for a sec. Um, test at Dunlira, fingless. I don't know. I mean, it's the best thing you can do is just try to be the best driver that you can, and don't worry too much about which test center is easier than the other because it's. It, I don't think that's something you can control. Um. It could very well be that Dunlira is has a higher pass rate than Fingless. I'm not sure. Mark failed there. Sorry about that, Mark. Any questions on the test? Uh, give me a shout. Uh, but sorry to hear that. 
And I'm going to finish here with interesting life. Uh, first of all, Cliff some more how you got your points off on drive save if you break abruptly. Okay, that's 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 a, that's a good app worth checking out there, folks, from Cliff some more. Um, so hope you all check I'll check out the app um another time. And interesting life. Thanks for the reply. Uh, my pleasure. Um, anytime. Delighted to answer your questions. So, folks, that's going to be the end of the. Uh, live chat here today i really enjoyed it uh time has completely flown by i was it's an hour and two quarters here now and i'm i only thought i'd be on it for 20 minutes but there were so many comments i just have to try and answer as many as i can i'm, I'm at the end of the comments there now uh darth vader thanks for very welcome darth vader my pleasure so thank you so much for tuning in if you want to learn more about driving about the test hit the subscribe button and the bell notification as well thank you for your donations Thanks so much for the support by PayPal. Really appreciate it. Another comment there. Our, our Jad Dane. Sorry if this is not related to driving. Any idea how much the weighing this in talent? Don't know. Uh, not really sure about that. Um, It could be 12 weeks. could be 16 weeks in talent. Not really sure. Cause I'm not 100% sure on that. You'd be better off kind of asking a driving instructor in talent. Uh, Sumitra, have a great day too. Thank you, Sumitra. Have a great day to you. Alexander, thanks. You're very welcome. So, folks, that's it. Seema, thank you. Seema Joseph, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it, folks. Hope to be back next Saturday. Anybody else looking to learn to drive? Anybody else looking for test tips? Uh, point them in the way of my channel and hope to see you uh, next Saturday again.